call his man order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, a moment, moment of silence for everyone being affected by um, property fires throughout the region. Thank you. Have a seat. Do we have a cell phone for the is on silent or library? Roll call, please. Karolovich? Here. Reichner? Here. Reese? Here. Brocious? Here. Nice. Awesome. All right. Uh, Chief here. I have the floor. Uh, first off, uh, the reason we're here tonight is. Uh, Two of my officers went for a promotional exam uh, through the civil service and both have passed with flying colors. And now we're here tonight to do the uh, an official kind of ceremony. They were promoted two weeks ago, but this is kind of like the official kind of here they are, the pinning and everything else. So I'm going to read a little bio on the both of them. And I'm going to ask, uh, first I'm going to ask uh, now Corporal Slack to come up with his, uh, whoever's pinning his back on, I think his mom. I'll give you a little background, a little bio on uh, Officer Slack. Um, Corporal Slack has been a police officer for 15 years. Corporal Slack has been serving as a full-time police officer in the city of Sunbury since 2010. Prior to his full-time appointment, Corporal Slack worked as a part-time officer for the city after graduating the police academy in 2005. Corporal Slack also served three and a half years at the Bloomsburg University Police Department before choosing to return to the Sunbury Police Department full-time. Corporal Slack has served as Northumberland County, Montour County detective since 2010 with the Drug Task Force. Corporal Slack has been married for 11 and a half years and has three children and one foster child. Corporal Slack has been active in the Chickalemi, as a Chickalemi football coach for over 10 years, serving the last five years at the high school level under Todd Tilford. Corporal Slack is a member of the Otter Ryan United Methodist Church, where he serves at, on the administration board and helps with the organization of the City Fall Festival. Corporal Slack also serves on the board on the Chickalini Grady Foundation, where he has served since its creation in 2014. During his police career, Corporal Slack has received training from the FBI, DEA, Pennsylvania State Police, McLaughlin, PSAR, Undercover Drug Investigations at the Northeast Counter Drug Training Center, the Center of Disease Control, FEMA, PHUs of Police, Penn State University, Bloomsburg University, Harry, Harrisburg County Community College. Corporal Slack has received certification in read interviewing and interrogation as an Alice active shooter instructor and also a PPCP self-defense instructor, a taser instructor, and a cell phone investigator, and an AR-15 armorer. While working for the city of Sunbury, Corporal Slack has received numerous, numerous accommodations and honors. Corporal Slack received an accommodation from the FBI for his work on the Craigslist killer homicide, one of the most notable Sunbury cases. And at this time, uh, Mayor, if you come up with the badge. The mayor is going to present the badge to his mom, to the ping, and the <coughs> council, ladies and gentlemen of the audience, I present to you Corporal Bradley Donald Slack. Sergeant Bremigen has been a police officer for 20 years. Sergeant Bremigen has been employed with the Sunbury Police Department for the past 17 years. Sergeant Bremigen started his career as a police officer in 2000 in Mifflinburg and Mount Carmel before being hired full-time in Sunbury in January of 2003. Sergeant Bremigen has held the following positions with the Sunbury Police Department as a patrolman, detective, and a corporal. Sergeant Bremigen has received training and certifications in numerous aspects of law enforcement, including criminal investigations, homicide investigations, street narcotics enforcement unit training, 
Undercover drug investigations, that's just to name a few. There were so many that we'd be here all night. <laughs> Sergeant Bremerton has been married 17 years and has three children. Some of his accomplishments include accommodations and citations from the Pennsylvania Office of Attorney General, B&I Division, for a large multi-drug operation that was conducted in Northumberland County and surrounding counties. He has received several accommodations of one individual merit and received the officer purple heart. He had accommodations of individual achievement, accommodations of merit for the use of an AED in the life-saving attempt. Most notably, he received a Class A individual notorious service accommodation for conducting the investigation into a homicide on November 11, 2013 in Sunbury from the Craigslist Killer investigation and was also recognized for his work uh, with the FBI. Sergeant Bremerson could also be seen over the years in schools as a former D.A.R.E. instructor and was always around during the soapbox derby and getting around the Halloween pumpkin painting with the kids in the city. So, Mayor, if you want to present his mom the badge. Mayor, Council, ladies and gentlemen of the audience, I present to you Sergeant Travis Anthony Bremerton. So, yep, I would like to say, you know, thank you to the whole city council, the mayor especially, um, been instrumental with the police department the past few years here, um, as well as council. I mean, I can't say, uh, like I said, I've been here 17 years. Um, Jimmy, you know, Rick, Joel, uh, just getting to know Josh, Chris, working great, Jody, you know, instrumental in what you're doing with the city, Kevin, and the treasury. So, I really appreciate and now Dan with the controller. So I've known Dan through the years, so been a, a great man. So I just appreciate, you know, everybody in the community, everybody, everything everybody does, you know, being behind the police department. So um, again, thank you, um, especially my family. I say one more thing before you get in the picture here. Um, this is just one more thing that we're doing with the police department to get the, uh, things moving forward in the uh, city police department. It's our kind of rebranding things. You see the cars are all getting redone, stuff like that. So we're rebranding ourselves, we're rebranding the department, and it's all positive moving forward. So I want to thank everybody for coming tonight, and uh, we got to do photo ops now. <laughs> Thank you again. One real quick thing I'm also going to say to, you know, is with the police department, Brad has, you know, been here as long as I've been here. He's actually been here a year longer than I have. Um, he has held many roles in this department. Um, I wouldn't want to be under anybody but Brad. Brad has done a fantastic job and continues to do a great job. And I think as, as we go through the years here, you're going to see a department that's, that's basically growing. Um, integrity wise, you know, and I've instilled in a lot of the guys that are new hires. We have a whole brand new department, and the city needs to know like, I'm instilling, Brad's instilling, and Brad are all instilling integrity in these guys. So, integrity, you know, it stands for itself. You know, it's, integrity comes down to the word is basically doing good and doing the right thing when nobody's looking. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that's what our department is going to be about, and that's what it is about now. So thanks again. Thank you. All right. Any audience comment on agenda items only at this time? We have a resolution for New Year's Eve, December 31st of this year, uh, until January 1st of 2021, using the public facility described below, Market Street from 2nd Street to 4th Street, Woodlawn Ave to Raspberry Ave. Um, the summary New Year's passed a resolution to see for citywide open container ordinance for New Year's Eve. I'll make that into a motion. 
Resolution 20-13, which, <coughs> excuse me, which are the procedures for compliance with the professional services contract provisions of a statute 53 PS 895.702A. Basically, any this resolution revokes and replaces prior resolutions relative to professional services regarding the City of Sunbury Municipal Pension System. Um, the this ordinance will allow the city to obtain new professional service contract, I'll call them applications, um, from interested parties, which parties will then be involved in the municipal pension system to give advice, be it legal, investment, actuarial, and other consulting services. Um, the, there is a specific conflict of interest provision which would prevent <coughs> current or former officials, employees, um, whether or not an official is a current or registered federal or state lobbyist, um, a former employee, employee of a contractor, position, participation of a former employee of the municipal pension system. Basically, this contract description will not allow what I'll call nepotism. Um, and which will prevent any conflicts within the professional services provided for our municipal pension. Okay. So I make this into a formal motion to accept this resolution. Second. <coughs> Reese? <coughs> yes. Yes. Eister? Yes. Karlovich? Yes. Reichner? Yes. So we have another resolution for the noise ordinance and open container ordinance for Sunbury River um, SRI and their River Festival uh, on Saturday, August 15th, 2020. Make this in a formal motion. Brochus? Yes. Eister? Yes. Karlovich? Yes. Reitner? Yes. Reese? Yes. Okay. Then we have the public notice ordinance that we were discussing at the previous um, council meeting. Um, you all should have a copy in your council folders and you know previously. Can you do a quick revamp on this one? Sure. The public notice ordinance, let me see it, is a basically a takeoff on a an or a statute which is proposed at this time to be introduced in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. It has passed the House of Representatives, currently is within the Senate about to be voted on and basically we're getting ahead of the game by simply passing it at this point or asking it to be passed as a ordinance of the city of Sunbury. This ordinance basically uh, includes all of those notices necessary under the Pennsylvania Commonwealth Act which is proposed and basically what this says is that all matters of city business to be conducted at a meeting will be posted on the agenda no later than 24 hours in advance of a meeting and that agenda will be available both on the website and in advance at the city offices. Um, if a matter is not included on the agenda at least 24 hours ahead of time, <clears throat> the council may not take action unless it's an emergency of real and potential danger for a clear and present danger to life or property. Um, there may be official action on a matter of agency business not listed if it rises within 24 hours before the meeting and calls for immediate uh, action. Um, the only other changes would be upon majority vote of the city council members present voting during the conduct of a meeting. So, so the agenda moving forward will it have to indicate action items or for like for instance if there's something in discussion that then leads to a motion are we able to do that 
will have to be listed under a new business. It would have to be under a new business at the next council meeting. Okay, so if discussion leads to a vote, you have to hold the vote until the next council meeting. Yes. Unless right. there's an emergency reason to do so. Yes. Okay. And the only way you can get something um, on the agenda that wasn't originally on the agenda, you have to have a majority vote before any other official vote was taken at that meeting. Okay. All right, make this an informed motion to accept this first reading. Second. Meister? Yes. Karlovich? Yes. Reichner? Yes. Reese? Yes. Roche. Yes. All right, Councilman Roche's road closures. All right, we have some road closures coming up here in the future this year. Uh, the first one is on May 2nd, which is the Chicken League Prom. Uh, next one would be Sunbury Celebration, which would be July 14th and 15th. Uh, National Night Out, October 4th. River. Oh, August 4th, I'm sorry. Riverfest, August 15th, and then the New Year celebration, which is obviously December 31st. So I make a motion to have those roads closed on those following dates. Second that. Karlovich? Yes. Reichner? Yes. Reese? Yes. Brocious? Yes. Eisner? Yes. All right, Ms. Ocker? Toward attitude for back to your packet is um, the information about the municipal intern program. <coughs> this is it. <coughs> <coughs> So uh, some months ago, um, I was made aware of the Pennsylvania Municipal Internship Program. It's a program by which um, uh, the Governor's Center for Local Government Services provides uh, opportunity for college students to have on-the-job training opportunities in Pennsylvania municipalities. So I submitted um, three different uh, proposed job descriptions and projects. and. Uh, just recently in January received a notice that there was a student interested in one of those projects. His um, resume is there in your packet, Alexander Rissinger. The way the program works is uh, as he is an undergraduate, he would be paid $15 an hour um, and we would pay that and then be reimbursed by the program at the end of, at the completion of his internship. The internship is around eight weeks long. They have a total of 360 hours uh, available. So um, he would like to do his internship uh, with the city administration office. His uh, focus project will be the records management system. We currently don't have a very efficient way of, of keeping and maintaining official records and having them be retrievable in an efficient manner. And that is something he would take the, the Pennsylvania Records Management Manual and ensure that we set up a hierarchy of filing system in order to make sure we're in compliance with that record keeping system. And then we can also clear out some of those files that are just kind of, um, that we've been keeping but is not necessary to keep and just be taking up space that we don't need to have. So that's what his project would be, that's his resume. Um, and uh, he would like to do that internship over the summer semester, so he would be starting in mid-May, completing by mid-August. And so I would like the council to vote on the hire. Oh, and also we'd be responsible for workers' compensation and taxes. <coughs> that would all we would have to pay, and I believe the estimate was around four hundred dollars for the taxes. What happens if he? So you said we get the money back if he completes the internship. What happens? If we still get the money back that, that he, um, whatever, whatever hours he worked. I like some of the words that were like he and his. Yeah. Exactly. And then the hours mm -hmm. So he'd be able to take some of our current paper files and make some of that maybe electronic too? Yeah, so I kind of wrote in there that, you know, in, in, at the end of his internship, if he would provide a presentation mm -hmm. to the council to talk about what he did, what he accomplished, recommendations that might help us be more efficient, whether it's an electronic filing system, et cetera. I'm sure. I'm to uh, approve that design. Second. Right here? Yes. Reese? Yes. Brocious? Yes. Eisner? Yes. Carlos? Yes. All right, Councilman Riker, your invoices. Okay, everyone. Uh, seeking approval for uh, payment of the general fund of $169,572.57. Uh, 
and liquid fuels monies of $61,065.25. I'll make that motion that we pay those bills. Grace? Yes. Brocious? Yes. Eister? Yes. Karlovich? Yes. Reichner? Yes. Ms. Ocker? Uh, the cable television franchise ordinance. Um, it wasn't quite ready to bring this evening. I'm sorry, we'll have to defer it to the next meeting, please. Okay. Full renovations discussions. Yes, yeah, so we're happy to announce that uh, the full renovation project that we've talked about before in council meeting, um, and this is the, the kind of uh, complete renovation to repair the expansion seams to resurface and then seal the pool surface that uh, we did receive funding from the 1994 Charles B. Dickinson Foundation in the amount of $150,000 for that project. That makes that uh, project basically fully funded. And so I just want to know at this point, I want to clarify the next steps as far as getting the um, final design and um, bid specifications ready to go out to bid. Um, Councilman Eisner, did you have any? Um, yeah, we spoke the other day. What I have here, I contacted the company, if it's water, incorporated. We've been doing business with them for years. They put the clearing system in for us a couple of years ago when they bought pumps and so forth. Right uh, down in town. He recommended uh, contacting CHA office, which is a company that does bid packets. Spoke to him on the phone. This is only over the phone. We described the size of the pool, what had to be done. And he's going to be stopping up, but he said between two and three thousand dollars for the bid packet. And what does the bid packet all include? The information for the bid to do the work that we're requiring. Is for. it a narrative or is it um, design plans and bid very specific bid specifications? Define the, the type of patchwork. Mm -hmm. Define the fact that uh, the expansion joints have to be removed and replaced. We're going to specify what product we're using. I have a cut sheet on every product they use. The cut sheet, of course, describes what the product is. Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons why, if you're looking at this company, when I mentioned if it's water, they are CoStar's contracted, okay? So they've invented already. We have been using them, like I said, for years, and you know about the CoStars. Mm -hmm. That's why we went to this company right here. Right. So um, <clears throat> we had originally spoke with uh, Aquatic Design and they had been the uh, outfit that came up and originally assessed the pool and determined what needed to be done. And in the, um, the proposed budget, there was that line item for the final design plans and the bid uh, specifications uh, was estimated eight to $12,000. I have since spoken with Brent Boyer, who said um, that that price would probably be eight or even under eight in order to do that. We also talked about the importance of making sure that the, the bid package, the, the documents, the final plans, are of sufficient detail um, and technical specifications to make sure that the job is done right. Um, uh, I spoke also with uh, Jersey Shore, who recently had some work done. They went with um, Aquatic Designs for those uh, plans. They had had a, a pool renovation project uh, previously where they only got a narrative of, the, uh, of what the project was, put that out for bid, they ended up getting a very inferior product in the end, and ended up uh, with more problems. And then they had, in the documents, in their specifications, were not detailed enough in order to have, uh, hold them accountable, the company accountable that did the work, um, to those specifications. And so they had a lot of legal trouble, and it was a big headache. Um, and then the, since that, they have a, a more recent project where they did use aquatic design. They did the final design plan and the specifications. Now, the company that um, they're associated with, the, um, the construction company for your pools, ended up not getting the bid, but, but aquatic design, the same person, you know, Brent Boyer, uh, had done the documents and then also was on site for inspection to ensure that the the uh, construction and the repairs were done to standards. Um, I think it's really important that um, <coughs> we are sure that what the product that we're going to get from the company you're referring to is going to be of the same quality and the same detail to make sure that, that this 
project is done well and that um, it's up to standard. Well, let's do it this way because I'm concerned about your product, not yours personally, but the company you're dealing with. Well, we get a sample of he done. If you've done the pool or we'll get a copy of that contract. I'll call this company, get a copy, a okay. copy, something in the same similar realm of the work that needs to be done. Mm -hmm. One thing I'm referring back to is, like I said, this uh, company, if it's wired, they're co-starting and they've been vended by the state of Pennsylvania. Okay, I don't think. Actually, I, I found what? him actually on Postcards, but I'll double check. I'm not sure I can say for sure. Off does, the top of my head. does the companies that you guys are referring to for the two thousand, two to three thousand you're asking for in eight to twelve years, do they give you a list of what that includes? Well, that's what I'm waiting for the okay. sheet. So I think you just compare that to what you already have, and if it lists all the same things, you know where you stand. But for that much less, you might be missing some things, or it might be well, that's true. you don't know. So right. I guess we can go from there. Okay. Yep. All right. Sounds like a good point. <laughs> Councilman Barosh, this is the feasibility study. Uh, I'm still gathering information on that. Like, I don't know what the proper term is, table it to next meeting, or I don't know what the proper word is. So okay. that, that's what I want to do, I guess. That's great. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you have anything, Fire Chief? Uh, Brad made a report that the ones are still out of service, but they're working under training. Okay, thank you. And I'm just going to um, inform everyone that the fire department and the Sunbury Fire Police, they, um, both entities received the Sunbury Caring Award at their annual banquet on Saturday. And the banquet was fantastic. With absolutely full people and food. Good roast beef. Very good roast beef. <laughs> All right. Uh, next Sunbury New Year's Eve celebration committee meeting is April 28th at 5 p.m. downstairs. The next 250th anniversary committee meeting for the city is March 26th at 6 p.m. in these council chambers. The next council meeting is March 9th at 6.15 p.m. in these council meeting or in this council chamber. Are there any audience comments at this time? Alright, with that, thank you all for coming out tonight.